when I was asking about the experiments, um, I was actually want wanting to know about uh, the lay people. So if there are any experiments that you've done or examples that can demonstrate to people kind of from a, a visceral, intuitive um, perspective what you're talking about. So the jeweled beetle example is great because it demonstrates that. That there's <laughs> the beetle is right there, is touching, feeling this bottle, and he just can't figure out that it's not another beetle. Right. Oh, so the the idea that our senses aren't showing us the truth. Yeah. Can we give a, an example of that? Oh, okay. And and are we, in some sense, like the beetle, where we can be fooled too? Yes. <clears throat> right. Well, so one example is makeup. So uh, properly done, a makeup job on a woman can make her look more beautiful than any real woman has ever looked, right? Her lips can be a, a shade of red that never occurs in nature. And of course you can do it wrong and look like a clown, but if you do it right, if you get it just the right amount, the right placement of the makeup, the right amounts, you can make a woman or any person look better than any real person could. And even uh, though a man knows what's going on, it still works. Makeup works. Why is that? Because we're like the jewel beetle. We have, we don't see the truth. We have these quick algorithms um, for de deciding, well, well so uh, there is a little bit I have to say about what's going on. So our, our judgments of beauty and attractiveness, what is that from an evolutionary point of view? <clears throat> from an evolutionary point of view, what we call beauty is really your measure of the reproductive potential of the person you're looking at. So when you look at a person, you get that initial hit within literally half a second. You get a hit of attraction or not, and somewhere in between. Um, that is a very sophisticated evaluation that you're, that you're doing. You're looking at dozens and dozens of cues, skin quality, hair quality, the limbal ring of the eye, the, the, the whiteness of the eye, the, the diameter of the um, iris, the diameter of the pupil all the symmetry of the face, you're looking at dozens and dozens of cues subconsciously. You don't know that you're doing it. You're doing a very sophisticated evaluation to answer one question. What is the probability that this person could have and successfully raise kids? That's not what you're consciously thinking, but that's what the hit of attraction or not of, attra or, of or of no attraction is. It's that estimate of the reproductive potential of a person. And since we can't actually measure someone's genes, right? You can't see what their genetic um, health is. You can't measure their blood and see if there are viruses or bacteria in there. You can't um, measure their hormones and see how high their testosterone or their estrogen is. You can't do all that. So you have to use fallible heuristics. And that's what we have. So our sense of attractiveness uses these very simple shortcuts. Um, and that's why makeup works. Once we, and, uh, and, and by the way, also how we attend to things in the environment depends on simple shortcuts. I mean, there's lots of things we could attend to. So we have little tricks and hacks that are built into us about why we look here versus there. And, and one of the things um, that I do, uh, I'm a cognitive neuroscientist. I, I know evolutionary psychology. I know visual attention. I know how vision works. I know the tricks and hacks that are built into our brains. So various companies have hired me to help them hack your brain. So marketing and advertising, Clothing. I've helped jeans manufacture. I won't mention any, but you you know that you, you would know the jeans. You would know the companies I work for. We've redesigned jeans to subtly craft them to make jeans like makeup for the body. So we can actually sculpt how your body looks by carefully understanding the tricks and hacks that are built into your brain. So we, um, I won't make any advertising for any, any company, but so, but then also I've worked with them for their marketing and advertising. I know how to grab your attention. I know the tricks and hacks that evolution built into you. So I can look at the advertising and say, that won't work. Here's what you need to do to grab attention and make sure that you can pull attention away from the competitors. This stuff works and they pay good money. This is really interesting because, you know, you, you brought it before that seeing reality as it is, is, is not beneficial. That's like programming or interfacing with a computer on a binary level or something, right? 
But what you're talking about is almost like bypassing the core uh, a kind of interface and using something command line or writing your own program so that you can put it to use. So I, I was right. questioning myself at the beginning when you were saying there's no benefit, but it really uh, uh, of seeing reality, but it's really in how it's what sections of reality you are are seeing and how you're constructing your your own interface, I guess, with them. Well, yeah. So it's it's all about playing the interface. So I, I'm, I'm effectively hacking the interface. Right. And that's what we've done in cognitive neuroscience. We've discovered the the tricks and heuristics that are built into the interface. It's just like once you understand how the jewel beetle works, if you want if you wanted to destroy the species, all you need to do is to throw out a few uh, you know beer bottles, and they would not mate with the females, and the species would disappear. So once you understand the interface, you can play it. And of course, I'm not trying, when I work with these companies, we're not doing something dastardly like that, but we are doing something that um, everybody does when they put on makeup. We're lying, right? When you right. put on makeup, you're lying. That's not who you really are, you but it's, it's, it's a white lie, right? Um, and and you know, when men, you know, we, we also put on yeah, lotion and so gym. forth. <laughs> right, that's right. So so we're we're lying, and 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 we're lying in a way that uses an understanding of the user interface. By the way, we're not the first. Um, this is ubiquitous in nature. So there are orchids that lie to bees. They have evolved to look like female bees, and they lure the male bees to try to mate with them. And the bees just get frustrated, and the the orchids get their pollination done. So, so talk about you know using makeup to abuse <laughs> and, and dump that that's that's orchids where where they're you know long before humans. And this is ubiquitous throughout nature. There are certain spiders that look like bird poop on purpose. I've seen right, that. they've evolved to look like bird poop. And and so everywhere you go, in fact. The right way, I think, to look at the competition between animals and plants and so forth is really, you can't understand it without understanding that it's about an evolutionary arms race between various interfaces and then creatures that are trying to hack those interfaces. So the, the orchid hacked the visual interface of the bee and got the bee to do something for the orchid that it needed. The dung bee, the, well, see the, the, the spiders that look like dung have hacked a part of the bird's interface and gotten themselves a longer lifetime. There is, there's the butterfly called the owl butterfly. It has big eye spots on it. And it, the whole thing looks like a huge owl with huge eyes. So the eyes are like massive on the on the on the wings of the owl butterfly, and so the owl butterfly is hacking the visual interface of, of predatory birds. Right, the predatory bird is flying around. It looks over there. It glances. It sees these huge owl's eyes, and that says, "Whoa, uh, I'm now the prey." Instead of being the predator, the bird is now the prey. So the the the, the butterfly is lying. It says, "I'm going to eat you." That's a big lie. That butterfly can't eat the the bird but it's lying and it works it works well enough that that it, it that it evolved and so this idea that we don't see the truth that we just have an interface and the interface therefore because it's not true has all these tricks and heuristics that you can hack that's the core of marketing and advertising and now product design that's how i help these companies change their jeans and their tops to be more attractive and I'll give you one concrete, one concrete example. One thing in marketing and advertising, and you can then look for it. It turns out that we have several different modules of attention in the human brain, not just one. We have several different algorithms for attention in the brain. One of them is we, if there's something that's animate, like an animal, a bird, squirrel, a human, an eye, a hand, we immediately focus attention and, and persist in attending to animate objects more than any other thing. It grabs and holds attention. And also the direction with humans, because we're a social species, the direction that a person is looking will also direct your attention to the direction that they're looking, okay? So 
this one company had me come and evaluate uh, a, an advertisement that they'd created. Uh, they spent many tens of thousands of dollars with an outside marketing firm and they wanted me to evaluate. They had, so they had hundreds of their marketing team there and they showed me the ad. They'd given it to me a couple days before. And so I, I went, I looked at the ad and they had a rugged looking guy with these jeans on and so forth, had their logo in bright letters. It was all very, very good, but the logo was there and the guy was facing the other way. And so I went, so what I did was I photoshopped it. I just turned the guy around so he was looking at the logo. So then I, I went to them and I said all the good things that they had about their, their, their marketing advertisement. But I pointed out this thing, what you're missing about human attention is that we attend to where a person is looking. And so notice that this guy, if he's looking over here and there was a competitor product <laughs> over there, what you spent your tens of thousands of dollars, perhaps millions of dollars in this marketing campaign to say, don't look at our product, look over there at the competitor's product. So if you don't know this one simple fact about you know, the user interface of humans, if you miss one aspect of it, you could spend all of your marketing dollars to advertise the competitor's product and not even know that you're doing it. That's why they pay me big bucks to help them out. So I'll, I showed them the next slide. I just turned the guy around and they all went, oh, because then you can see with your own eyes, okay, yeah, now he's giving attention to their own logo. So, so, but there's dozens of things like that. Once you get into this and really understand that we're not seeing the truth, it's an interface and you can hack it, then it's really fun. There are lots of aspects of human vision and sensory perception that you can hack. Um, and it's being done right now. Um, and cognitive neuroscience are getting, getting used to, to help the industries do this. So that's a practical application. You're being, this is being used on you all the time right now. And if it's successful, you don't even know it's being done. <laughs> I think it's really cool that uh, you point out that all the conscious creatures do this as well. That it's right. not some sort of a, you know, nefarious human manipulation that right. plants and animals were all competing with each other by hacking uh, each other's interfaces. <laughs> that, that's right. And that's right. Probably the best way to actually understand the competition between animals and, and plants. It's, it's hacking interfaces. That's the right way to think about it. So it's, yeah, we're not the first. We're not the worst. <laughs> um, but but we're, we're now catching up to the orchids. <laughs> <laughs> the brand new Future Thinkers Members Portal is now live. Develop your sovereignty and self knowledge with our in depth courses, get access to our weekly sense making calls, join the QAs with past podcast guests, and much more. Become a Future Thinkers member today at futurethinkers.org slash members. Enter the Future Thinkers giveaway and win our brand new community membership, including in-depth courses, private calls, and more, as well as a supply of Qualia, a complete cognitive upgrade for your brain. To enter the contest, simply go to futurethinkers.org slash giveaway and sign up for our mailing list to instantly get our 50-page guide on how to adapt to the future. There are many ways to increase your chances of winning. Enter the competition today.